returning, but welcome to the channel if you're new. Uh, this will be the first video of the Chargers franchise. We did one of these for the Giants, and we're still kind of doing that one, but I wanted to start this one on this account after my last account. I cannot log into, thus I cannot continue that franchise. Now, if you guys watched that one, you know I did a lot of trades, all of which were more for, you know, mid-70 to mid-80 range players, and that franchise was going pretty well. Now, obviously, with what happened, I need to make a new one. And so this one, I decided to go a little bit differently. They didn't, I haven't updated the ratings for players or anything on this specific account for some reason. So I feel like a lot of our players were lower rated, like uh, Justin Jones should have been higher, Kaiser White should have been higher up. But, <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that. Um, I decided to go a little bit of a different route. I was, when I introduce the team, you'll see what I mean. I was leaning more heavily on defense in terms of moves as opposed to, you know, shoring up the offensive line and stuff because there was a lot less to do with that this time around as last time. But real quick, what I did want to tell you guys is I had a very tempting idea to go ahead and relocate the Chargers back to San Diego. I decided against doing that. I mean, we have the fan base already, and I did make it to where we can relocate if we really wanted to. But in real life, there's the Chargers fan base is starting to grow steadily throughout the course of this season as well as last season. So I'm going to decide to just keep them in L.A. So I'm probably going to change from owner to coach here probably when I'm not streaming because that's a process that takes a couple minutes. And I don't really feel like doing that. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual roster here. I'm going to go by roster instead of by lineup so that all the players don't get spoiled right when I go to the lineup screen. So obviously there was no change at there was no change at quarterback. Still have Phil, uh, still have Justin Herbert, Easton Stick and Chase Daniel. <laughs> I have injuries turned off right now. I think I might turn them on later, but I need to figure out where to put the slider for injuries so half our team isn't injured in like three weeks. But we know all we need to know about Herbert, offensive rookie of the year last year. In real life this year, he's putting together an even better season than last. He thankfully was given superstar dev. 96 throw power, 85 deep, 85 mid, 80 or 91 short, 81 awareness, throw on the one, 90, play action, 88, thunder pressure, 87, 84 speed. So I will go ahead and go on record and say I'll probably increase the deep accuracy by a couple, mid accuracy by a couple as well, probably put them at 87, 88. But otherwise, I'm not going to mess with his ratings that much. Obviously, we don't have to worry about re-signing him for a while. Easton Stick is the backup, so when I do turn on injuries, he will be the guy we'll look to if if Herbert gets injured. And he's he's pretty good if you compare the two. He has a little bit more speed, so we'll probably end up doing like more play actions or like option plays with him. He doesn't have that much of anything else on Herbert in terms of overall, but that's to be expected. Here's where we make the big change. We have Austin Eckler at Superstar. His ratings, obviously, are pretty good. 92 speed. He's, you know, an all-around three-down back. Not going to go into all his specifics, really, but you guys can see him on the screen. He's, he's pretty good. And the main thing in real life for him is to get a foil for his production, right? For him to take some time to not have to be on the field on every down. Now, as you can see, last year he had dealt with some injuries. He he's steadily a five to six hundred yardage guy on the ground. With last year, he only had a touchdown, but he had three on the other ones, and I think he missed a lot of last season, if I remember correctly. And then receiving wise, he's steadily a four plus hundred yard receiver. Normally has a couple touchdowns added on. In real life, this year I think he's at like seventeen or eighteen. I think he has a lot more yardage than this in real life. We did trade for Cam Akers. Now, I will say this, for all the trades I've made, I got rid of a lot of our draft capital because of the players we were picking up and how young most of them were. Ratings-wise, 
he's basically the same as Eckler. Has a lot of speed, a lot of agility. Not good at catching, but he's more going to probably be more of our power back when we don't want Eckler to be on the field. We still have Joshua Kelly, but we <clears throat> we did trade ja uh, Jackson as part of the deal for Cam Akers. And Larry Roundtree obviously rounds up the halfbacks. I was on the fence about keeping Gabe Neighbors, but in our other franchise, he was really good at getting the, that short yardage and getting in the end zone when we needed him on fullback dives, so I decided to keep him. The wide receiver room didn't change at all. I have Joshua Palmer playing the slot instead of Guyton because I want him to get the reps and hopefully get like a dev trait. <clears throat> But we know all about Keenan Allen. We don't need to go into him. Uh, we're probably going to resign him when his time's up, depending on if he actually regresses. Mike Williams, I'm still on the fence about, but 94 catching, 95 catching traffic, uh, 90 plus on all route running, spec catch 95, release 95. So uh, you, we know what Keenan Allen is capable of. <clears throat> Mike Williams is the other guy we obviously have to re-sign him this season, but we gotta see how he produces first. In real life, we know how he's doing pretty well. We, the Chargers, you know, fan base is pretty much in agreement. If it's a deal that he's actually worth, we'll re-sign him, but if he asks for too much, then we gotta let him go. He has very good spectacular catch, which is obviously true. Catching traffic, 91 is also fine. Uh, he also has 86 ball carrier vision. So he's, he's a pretty good um, second guy to Keenan Allen. I would highlight Guyton, but he's probably not going to get as much production as Ross Palmer, so we're going to highlight him instead. Rookie, 88 speed, 89 XL, 86 catching, 80 catch in traffic, 83 spec catch. He's probably going to be on a lot of slants, drags, maybe some shot plays if he gets open, but I'm thinking he'll be a short mid-yardage type of guy for this offense. Tight end-wise, we did trade for Dawson Knox. I was going to try to trade for uh, Heck Hawkinson from the Lions, but they were just wanting a little bit too much for him. 87 speed, 87 catching. Uh, 82 catch in traffic, 83 spec catch. So he's he's a good tight end to have. Uh, we're going to get his his blocking skills up probably with the first few upgrades. Uh, Donald Parham and Trey McKitty um, solidify our tight end group for the future. Left tackle, we obviously have the rookie Rashawn Slater, who in real life has been excellent on that side of the ball. 98 strength, 79 run block, 83 pass block. I am going to, once again, uh, Herbert and Slater, I'm going to give a lot, or Slater more so than Herbert, I'm going to be adjusting his ratings because of where he is actually playing at right now. Like, run blocks going up, pass blocks going up. The different types of pass blocks specifically are going to go up because he's really good at that. Same with run block. I think I'm going to get them all up to about 85 to 87, I think, is where I'll stop. But I feel like that's fair, especially for how he's been playing in real life and because the rosters are not updating him. So that's for Son Slater. We have Trey Pipkins behind him, as we all know. <coughs> Left guard, Matt Filer. I was on the fence. I was thinking about trading him, but he has the, a good enough ratings right now. He's only normal dev, so he might be you know, shipping him off or getting rid of him during the off season. Who knows, I might even trade him before this episode ends to see what type of left guard we can get in his stead. We obviously have all pro Corey Lindsley at center. He's not going anywhere until he starts regressing heavily because all his blocking trades are really good right now and that's very hard to get in the draft when it comes to Madden. Right guard, this is where we made a change. Chris Lindstrom, one of the two linemen we traded when we got rid of Brian Bulaga, yes, he is gone. Uh, Chris Lindstrom, he's a pretty good uh, blocker all around. I think he'll be very, really good at keeping um, holding blocks without getting called for holding plays when um, either of our running backs take off. So yeah, he's 24, so he has. We can definitely develop him, assuming we can get him some uh, decent experience points. And then we actually went down significantly at right tackle. I think Brian Bulag is like an 86, 87, 88, something like that. Way higher than I think he should be. 
This guy's obviously about 14 to 15 lower than him. However, he is also about four years younger. And his blocking stats aren't great, but we'll get him up to where we need him to be when the time comes to upgrade him. So that's the offense. Here comes the defense. The defense is where I did a lot more of the trades. I wanted to beef up the defense, specifically the starting lineup, as well as making sure the depth players are somewhat people we already had before. So left end, we traded for Brian Burns, one of the people who costed us a lot of draft capital, but was definitely worth it. 88 speed, 82 finesse move, 91 acceleration, 80 tackling. Block shedding will hopefully get up. Play rec is high. Awareness is high. Agility is high. He's definitely a speed rusher through and through. Superstar dev, so that's a good guy to have on the roster. I think I got rid of Justin Jones as part of the deal to get him, but obviously Justin Jones was only like a 74 and was probably very close to being in the regressing um, time frame of his career, so I decided to go ahead and get Brian Burns. We're going to save right end here for one more. We've got Ed Oliver. He's obviously a little bit lower overall than um, Linval Joseph. I think he's an 86, but Linval's also over 30. This guy's 23, so we can develop him a lot easier than we can develop somebody like, you know, Linval Joseph. He's a, the, our finesse rusher. He's good at tackling. He has really good strength, decent speed, so he should be able to get us some decent sacks. Now, this is something I was asked during the um, spaces or space that I was in where we were talking about the bolts, and I actually brought this up initially. Some of you that are watching were probably in there, but yes, I did get a hold of Nick Bosa. Uh, Superstar X-Factor, 23 years old, second year in the league. And yeah, he's going to probably rushing opposite Bosa when Bosa is rushing the passer. Jerry Tillery, I was going to get rid of him, but at the same time, he's an okay depth guy. He just isn't a guy that I want to start on my team, hence why we got Nick Bosa. We already went over those guys. Joey Bosa's still here. Kyle Fackrell's still here. Kaiser White, Drew Tranquil, Kenneth Murray, and Nick Neiman are our middle linebackers. Nobody here is really, you know, I really have to go over. We know who these players are. We know their skill sets. Right outside linebacker in Wosu who kept his job. I was planning on potentially trading for somebody else, but in Wosu does do the job that I need him to do, so he was able to stay. Chris Rumpf, I was honestly thinking about shifting him over to another position, seeing if his ratings go up, maybe starting him, but for now we're gonna put him behind in Wosu, maybe put him on as one of our focus players for training. Here's where I did the most work at though. Carlton um Davis was the first guy. We actually traded Chris Harris as part of this. I traded Chris Harris in the first round. I feel like that's good for the two players we ended up getting. 88 speed, 84 zone, or 84 man, 83 zone, 88 play rec, 88 press. So he, he's a decent guy. He's only in his third year right now. Star dev. And then we also picked up Jamal Dean, also 24. In his second year, 93 speed, 88 man, 82 zone. So he's he's pretty good. We have two man slash zone guys right there. Then we have Asante Samuel, who obviously was already on the roster. I'm going to make some adjustments to his because I feel like his man zone and play rec, I can push up to near 80 for all of them, maybe a couple points off. Otherwise, he's very fairly rated, I guess. I, I would adjust it a little bit, but probably not a lot. I'll make notes of him and like the Slater and Herbert or the three. I'm going to make some adjustments to their ratings. We got Julian Blackman to line up opposite um, Derwin James. He's in his second year, technically. I forgot that rookie years don't count as one. They count as rookie. So this is actually his second season and add one on to the people I've mentioned before. 90 speed, so we got someone who will be decent in zone. Very good speed to catch up to people if need be. And 73 hit power is a little bit low, but with Derwin on the other side, we don't actually need two hard-hitting safeties. One is quite enough. <coughs> and obviously we have Mark Webb and Trey Marshall behind him. 
Obviously, we got Derwin James and Gilman. I don't have to talk about Derwin. We all know how Derwin plays. He has the speed and the hit power, so we're good there. I did trade for Justin Tucker. I did have to give up like a fourth or a third or something like that, plus Dustin Hopkins, who, though he's playing well for us in real life, is not good in Madden. He's only a 72 overall. 99 kick power, 99 kick accuracy. Probably won't have to worry about missing kicks unless I manually fuck it up. And we also picked up Michael Dixon, who though is roughly the same age, if not maybe a little bit older than Ty Long, has really good kick power, kick accuracy, and has a quicker release on the punts, which was the main problem with our guy. This is what we have left. As you can see, we got rid of all but three picks this year, and we got rid of only the first, fourth, uh, next to get who we needed, along with some of the other players that we had that were also part of the trades to get who we have right now. With that being said, um, next episode we're obviously going to go against Washington. Now, I did mention that I was thinking about maybe trading somebody away. And I don't think I'll do that this episode. We might do it next episode after we see how we play against these Washington football team members. I'm thinking if I got a trade for anybody... It'll probably be for one of the linebacking spots I feel like is going to be who we might need to trade someone for, specifically right outside or middle. But we'll see how our linebackers play in the next episode before we decide what we do there. Now, players ready to negotiate. I looked at this before I spooted up the stream, or the, well, the stream that I was going to turn into the video. And obviously we have Carlton Davis here. We're going to go ahead and re-sign him right now because... As he goes up in overall, and if he like, gets a death trade or something, he's going to end up wanting more money, and so we need to get it out of the way while it's still a manageable deal to pull off. And we do. Obviously, we have Mike Williams, who, depending on how he plays, we'll see how his stats turn out, how much he contributes in terms of what he has done and what his stats are versus like Allen's, and how much of Herbert's stats came from Mike Williams. We'll decide if we re-sign him. Kaiser White, if he plays well in the game as well as he has in real life, will get re-signed. Same thing with the ones too. I don't know about Guyton. I'll have to decide that one later. Farquhar, same thing. We'll see if regression hits him as well. Chris Covington, probably leaving. Andre Roberts, we'll see how he plays in the game. If he ends up giving us some pretty good uh, returns, we'll go ahead and keep him around. Brian Smith, we're probably going to get rid of. Same thing with Schofield. We'll probably resign Parham, Gabe Neighbors, maybe Devonta Harris is going to get rid of, probably. We're going to base, if we actually do it, based on, like, if they actually perform well. But in terms of right now, probably only a handful of guys I'm going to prime on bringing back, even remotely close to halfway, on um, in terms of how I feel about bringing them back. And let me show you real quick before we end end this first episode, well, episode zero, I guess. This is how I decided to line up the special t specialists, right? So obviously, here's how the starting roster looks in terms of who's starting where. Uh, special teams, obviously, Roberts is going to be our return guy. He's an 80 overall returner. We have no one else that's even remotely close to that. Now, specialists, I decided to put Josh Parham, or Josh Palmer, at slot. Guyton, I feel like, is older, obviously, than um, Palmer. Palmer can definitely get more upgrades by lining up in the slot. Younger, maybe we get him a dev trait, and that'll give us a little bit more of an option if we want to maybe get rid of Williams later. I also put Cam Akers at power back because he's only three overall less at power back than Eckler is, and I feel like that's where he will be able to help us out the most. Drew Tranquil, I went ahead and put at sub linebacker. Obviously, Kaiser already starts, and I'm not quite sure if I want Kenneth Murray taking on that type of responsibility. I might shift these two out for each other later down the line. We'll see. Uh, Nick Bosa and Joey Bosa, obviously, are the rush right and left ends. Ed Oliver is going to be our um, DT for specific formations, and obviously we're going to have Asante Samuel as our slot corner. Probably our best route to go there, and then practice squad is obviously not really that important because they're probably not going to make 
any impact on the team until later down the line if I decide to turn injuries back on. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, hit the like button, comment down below some trades that you might want me to attempt maybe down the line, as well as your score predictions for what might happen in this Washington football team game. Try to keep them somewhat realistic. Don't say like 40 to like 10 because who knows, we might lose by that score for all we know. But yeah, keep the scores relatively in the realm of possibility. Uh, it will have 8 minute quarters so it won't be that long in terms of how long videos are. And if I do end up getting into blowout or shutout almost territory, late in the third or early in the fourth, we'll either be simming the rest of the game or I'll only play one side of the football or the other to kind of cut down the length of the video. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.